Okay. Uh, Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Jenkins Weekly Infrastructure Team Meeting. We are the 22 of August. Today, around the table, we got Mark Waite, myself, Damien Portal, Stephen Merlin, Kevin Martins. Uh, let's get started with the announcement. We were able to successfully release the weekly core 2.419 last week, no problem. Uh, and today, we uh, we didn't release successfully the version 2.420. Um, so we had an issue, um, failure during test phase. During uh, test phase? Yes. Uh, I haven't looked on this. Uh, ideally, we should relaunch it. I don't know. Maybe that could be, uh, I don't know if it's a consequence of using GDK 17 on the agent. I but doubt I, it. I, maybe on the memory management. Uh, I haven't looked at the data dog metrics of the pods. There are CPU and memory metrics, and maybe the memory usage is different. Got to check. Okay. But, um, uh, if this infra issue, GTK 17, uh, resource limits, or maybe it's uh, timeout, as uh, Alex uh, said, because we don't have that error on CI Jenkins IO main build, so there is something different. Uh, let's restart the build and see. Any question? No. Do you have other announcement? No. One, two, three, no. Okay. Uh, upcoming calendar. Uh, next weekly uh, will be next week, 2.421. Uh, will be the 29 of August, is that correct? We have a new LTS line that should be released tomorrow. Oh no, uh, yep, yeah. and security release. We did add, we did, we did have had a security release last week. Everything went fine as far as I can tell. We don't have new security release publicly announced here. So nothing here for us. Um, I have another announcement. Um, we had to rebuild the container image of Jenkins uh, for all Linux version on, for the three past releases. So 3.1.1 and the last... Uh, what's the... Uh, here, 4.01.3 and the last weekly. So um, we looks like we had a bug and a whole tag of the container image was built, which has the side effect of overriding some of the usual tags such as LTS Alpine, LTS Alpine, etc. And some version were rebuilt and redeployed, which is really annoying. So since we provide different operating system and architecture than we used to do with that old version, um, we we decided to rebuild the world set for each version to avoid any risk of, uh, let's say, if you have uh, Alma Linux, that's okay, but if you have Debian, you have an old version. Uh, so the, the consequences is that the checksum of these images changed. Uh, so we started, thanks for that, Mark and, and Kevin, we started a blog post to announce that to end users, but we need to update slightly the blog post because it's not only Alpine. Well, and and I think we've got users asking, could we also republish older weeklies and to to repair it? So we had one requesting, hey, it's okay. the current. So two point four nineteen is the current is the most recent weekly. Is it feasible for us to rebuild to to republish the all the way you know several weeks back, or is that just infeasible? Technically, yes, uh, but we have to do it on the right order, and that means republishing today's weekly. 
because each build uh, or republish the latest tag saying, oh, that's the currently built, which is the oh, latest. Oh, right. Okay, right. So, so the answer is no for the weekly. Uh, they okay. can use a, either 2.4 or 19 or the upcoming 2.4 uh, or 20. And is, is there any way for us to discard a republished version from the Docker Hub saying, hey, we're not really, I assume, no, they, they treat them as as once you've published it, it's visible forever. Could eventually, could we uh, modify the pipeline to not push on latest? If uh, certain no, clearly no. the the okay. only the only outcome of trying this will result on way more mayhem. Trust me, uh, that's no, we we no, simplified yeah, it sure. as. But that's that would have been a good idea if that publication was a usual image. But the controller image is not like the agent; it's way more complicated because it has five dimensions. So that's why yeah, we publish automatically atomically. A given release, so I'm I'm sorry for the end users, but I, I would be interested on the use and the reason why they cannot use the latest weekly version. Since it's updated once a week, there will be at least two weekly late. I mean, given right. we have a new LTS tomorrow, I would and given the number of the upcoming LTS, I would suggest them wait for Thursday and either switch to the new LTS or right. switch to the latest weekly. I, I think that that is the correct answer is that we that may make them uncomfortable. But even if it makes them uncomfortable, we simply don't have a reasonable facility in the time we have to go back and publish, republish those those outdated versions. Yep. Um, okay. So that means a given tag is atomic, either all uh, OS and platform and must be rebuilt in the proper order right to ensure latest got it or at least or at least ensure latest weekly is rebuilt is last. is always rebuilt last exactly right. okay. um and uh yeah but yeah, that that's problem, and we still need to find a solution to protect ourselves from this scenario. About your question, can we discard? Uh, we can delete the tags on the Docker Hub, purely and simply. Uh, but that means this version will be gone. Yeah, that and that's that. I think is is also a mistake, right? That will create a different class of mayhem. Right. So yes, we could, but but in, in either case, the problem we have is best solved by users doing what we recommend anyway, which is upgrade to the latest weekly. If you're on weekly, you should be upgrading to weekly. Exactly. Either using or and upcoming. now we're any of yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. yes. Good. Maybe we 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 could um uh, publish them as read only and and not being able to override them for that kind no, of problem not that's to happen. That's not the Docker registry does not allow that. Okay. It's not like eventually on Artifactory, but even on Artifactory, I'm not sure it's possible. It's only a Maven artifact or Node.js artifact, but the Docker okay. registry does not. Uh, does not allow locking a given tag. And the thing is that here we are in our, in the, we have a lot of restriction, but that's the location where putting any restriction is only based on is Jenkins behaving properly. And here it's a, it's really a Jenkins bug or, or something really weird. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, I will add messages because Tim, at proposal to protect ourselves even more than today because right now we are not publishing master branch so that that's a good thing uh, now the problem is that the whole tags we set up the job to not build tags older than three days and still they were built which which doesn't so i might be missing something and but that's really really weird and the suggestion of team 
I wasn't able to find the multi-branch job traits he was mentioning. There is a trait that says filter branch or pull request by name. And there is a field for filtering tags. Mm. I wasn't able to find that option, neither the field on trusted CI. Mm. So, so that yeah, might it, be a plugin. I, I'm, I'm reasonably confident it is a plugin because branch, so filtering traits are intentionally many small plugins. So the last thing will be protecting ourselves on the pipeline level. We have the environment variable with the tag, so we have to fail the pipeline. No, that one won't work because the whole tag doesn't have the pipeline change. So, right. so uh, okay. that's nightmare. I would advise on removing the tags, but that's the same kind of thing as to removing Docker tags, removing tags from GitHub, especially when they are associated with the GitHub releases. Right. It, I, I think let's let's not let's admit that we've got a problem and try to not make it any worse. Yeah, I'm a bit sad by this. That's really not a uh, trustable. Uh, yeah, we'll see what we can do, and I will report next week on that topic. Is that okay for everyone? Yes. So next major event, Jenkins election start in September. So reminder, the nomination of candidates is a period of a few weeks where people, where you have to nominate candidate for the different jobs. So it's not you that goes say, hey, I want to be, oh. Self-nomination is allowed. Exactly. Oh. But self-nomination is allowed. But but the crucial thing for me is the the infrastructure officer will be up for consideration as part of this this election. We elect new officers every year. Likewise, the documentation officer. So, Kevin and Damien, you you are welcome to continue and pro nominate yourself, or the rest of us will happily nominate you. But if you say I'm not sure I want to do that, then you need to go looking for somebody who'll take your place as a candidate. Don't tell my boss, but I, I will reconsider and for 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 nominating myself again. <laughs> well, your boss will probably nominate you one way or the other, but only after <laughs> checking with you. But yeah, I'll... I will not check with him. I will just push him in. Okay. So Under the bus. For, don't forget to nominate candidates for every post, including yourself, if you feel like it. That's the sign of an healthy community. Uh, that's that's not easy for me as current officer trying to to get to stay officer to say that. But yes, it's important to have people presenting with the project ideas and changes if needed. Uh, and in any case, don't forget during the second period between 18th of September until November to register yourself as voter. Yes. The condition, the threshold is you have I suppose it's the same as last year, Mark? Yes, it is. You and need to be a Jenkins uh, contributor, and everyone who is on this call is a Jenkins contributor. Everyone. So, so please don't forget to register. <laughs> and don't forget to vote again. That's really the healthiness of the community. On 11 of December, we will have results. And if question, things to add, things I forgot, think them clear on the topic of the Jenkins elections. No? Okay, so let's continue. Oh, oh, I, I take ah, it back. Yeah. We've got one more major event, though. Yes. Java 21 support. Uh, our Java 21 arrives in our Jenkins containers uh, today. And tomorrow. Uh, and tomorrow, right? Now... It's still an early access version and saying support is too strong a term, right? Java 21 early access, how about? Uh, will be in Jenkins, can, yeah, as early access, good. Perfect, and and it's, uh, so it, it's expected to be available today and tomorrow and encourage people to test drive it. So that's great news. Um, as a reminder, for the infrastructure to start testing controller and production, um, I would prefer to wait for the initial release 
because okay. it doesn't have a CVE process in place right yeah. now. So running publicly this. Uh, that might be a bit risky. Right. We, we absolutely do not. We want to wait till Java is released. That's for sure. We'll wait for official GDK 21 in October. Uh, September. September? Cool. Yes. Before trying on controllers. But of course, we have GDK 21 already available because we were able to build these images. Yes. Nice one. Okay, for everyone? Okay, so let's start with the work we were able to finish during the last milestone. Open the link. So these were two weeks milestone, a lot of tiny tasks, but not a lot of person available at the same time. So we have overall the workload of one week. Um, let's start with unable to release plugin 401. Um, that one has been open today. It's a contributor uh, that's uh, tried too early to release their plugin using the CD automated process while their token wasn't created yet by the repository permission updater. So we explained and told them to wait three hours. No feedbacks, but they were... Everything looked good. They had a token. It was valid. I tested the token myself. It was just a time they tried 10 minutes too early. It's so... not the first help desk issue from this user. I've also added an issue in the repository permission updater to suggest adding uh, an automatic command in merge pull request with uh, explanation and timing. Good, good idea. I'll pass the link. Uh, ready to add a message in RPUPR to let user know of the three hour time window. That's really a good idea that will help because it's not the first time. And yeah, I mean, it's not really clear. It's yeah. Exactly. There, are, yes. there is a lot of explanation in this repository, a lot of things to follow. So yeah. Absolutely. I think you're absolutely right. It's clear for us because we use it and maintain it, but yeah, for newcomers that will help them to avoid uh, setting false expectations. Thanks, Hervé. Something else on that topic? Okay, so next topic, switch to GDK 17 for Jenkins controller and agent processes. It's done. We are using GDK 17 for all the GVM processes involved by Jenkins. Um, the release today was executed on an agent run with GDK 17, but still using GDK 11 for building Jenkins. It's a dev tools versus an execution tool. Uh, haven't seen any error yet. Uh, yeah, nothing else to say, except that we have a bunch of different agent definition everywhere. So last time we were able to divide by half I uh, was able to decrease that uh, spreading of 20% this year. I hope that for GDK 21, we will be able to have a centralized location, at least one for Linux and one for Windows. Uh, so yeah, it's a personal minor failure. I was hoping that we were able to finish the all-in-one image before GDK 17. We weren't for a, good, a lot of good reasons. So it's just I'm a bit sad. I was challenging... Uh, uh, but yeah, everything is working well. I hope we will see operational benefits on the memory usage, but that happened to be measured. So let's wait one week and see the, the result. Any question? Okay. Um, a repository that wa uh, of a plugin that was archived because the product behind was closed uh, two years ago. Uh, Maven incremental command, so that was not related to infrastructure at all. However, the instruction, it's the same thing as RPU. Uh, that's a note for Mark and uh, for Kevin. The MVN incremental command instruction looks good on the paper, but there was there is still a bug. Um, and yeah, not only fixing the bug will help, but also the, the plugin documentation 
could be improved by saying if you have an error, you have to look on the detailed instruction here. So that's just the link and an explanation. Because in that case, the user carefully followed the instruction from Jenkins.io and still had an issue because their POM XML was missing something because they they played with it. That wasn't an easy one, uh, but yeah, good opportunity to jump on how is Maven working with its plugins. Um, might be more minor update. Any question? GDK21 support for developer to pre and try. So thanks, Stefan. Um, note as pointed by Tim for the Jenkins CI slash Docker, a team was able, based on the work done by Bruno and Stefan about locating the proper Timurin 21 binaries, was able to find some hidden release, which in fact are official release by Timurin, a preview release with a fixed name on the release and tag name, which will allow automation and tracking of updating the version until the last version is okay. So Stefan, that means as we show, uh, we we checked together. Right now, we are using for the infra the nightly builds, while the uh, the preview Docker image will use the weekly builds. That's the only difference. So we might want to to put our hands on this one if we have time, but that's not a mandatory topic. Uh, in any case, I'm not opening an issue if we have time. We we'll do it, uh, and, and until the official release, where we will have to do something. And we use weekly with fixed tag name, allowing tracking with update CLI. Any question on GDK21? So nice job, Stefan, because you had a lot of places to check for this one. <laughs> a lot of puppet magic. Uh, not able to log into Artifactory, so you the problem with some user uh, that need a manual uh, change of the setup on Artifactory for them in order to use the LDAP password instead of whatever local password they have. Still not fixed. Uh, I will uh, come back on that topic. Still open, but that user, for that user, that was fixed. Right now, it's still a manual case by case. CD release fading, invalid token and trusted CI Jenkins IO. Uh, that one happened last week, as far as I remember. Um, <clears throat> and it's because we uh, the, the administration token used by the repository permission update or job, which allow it to connect to a GFrog API to create reset token and permission on Artifactory. That top level admin token was expired. So of course, the RPU build was failing with 401 because it wasn't presenting any token. So um, a new token has been generated once we understood. Uh, I've updated the calendar because that wasn't the infra team in charge of that token last time. It was a free uh, valid token. It was done before any of us uh, was working here. It was done by Daniel and Olivier and they didn't have the calendar. So now it's on the calendar and it's only valid for one year and I've added plenty of uh, notifications. And also as I show, I show to Stefan on trusted CI, the token, I've set the ID because if they have an ID uh, visual, um, to map it to administration in Artifactory. And um, the expiration date is also on the Jenkins credential for that token on trusted. So easier for you folks to understand it if it fell in one year. Any question? Uh, finally, that was a leftover of last uh, Kubernetes upgrades. Now the administrative user used to install and chart an application on our cluster by InfraCI. That technical user is now defined as code on the six clusters. That means it's not only a script on my machine each time we recreate a cluster from scratch. Any question or things unclear on this one? Okay, we had three issues uh, closed as uh, as usual, no answer back from the user. 
Now let's jump on the big topic. The first one and top priority for now is assess artifact rebound with reduction option. Uh, Mark, can you give us some heads up on this one? So I won't be alone talking. Yeah, so so artifactory bandwidth reduction, we've got agreement from JFrog that if we can successfully stop mirroring central, the Maven central repository, that will be sufficient in terms of their expectations from us to reduce our bandwidth use. And the reason they were willing to do that is because our our analysis showed that that is the majority of the misused artifact or misused mirrors. And since it's the majority, they said, that's fine. It's also a change that we believe we can make without requiring new releases of palms, without requiring new releases of plugins, without requiring changes to 2000 plus GitHub repositories. So we, we like that they were willing to compromise in that way. We're very, very grateful for that. We have more work to do to assess we did an initial brownout. We found positive results in ways we'd hoped, but some surprising messages that need more investigation. We'll report our latest results to JFrog in a meeting on Thursday or Friday. And so I and Damien both, Damien and I both have uh, some preparation to do to be sure we're ready for that meeting with JFrog. Thanks, Mark. It was, was there anything I missed, Damien? No, that's still uh, still see the same. So yeah, didn't have time to spend on that one uh, either. So let's. I hope we will have time Thursday to prepare for Friday. Any question? Think them clear, for, uh, folks? Okay, no. So then let's continue. A new issue that I've had it's uh, around public uh, cluster. So we had the. Uh, uh, failures on javadoc uh, jenkins io and another website i don't remember which one um in fact we um, whether we use intel or irm for these services they all have the same problem we don't define an anti affinity which means all the replicas of a given service are scheduled in some scenarios on the same machine. Sometimes it's on different, sometimes it's on the same it's something that exists since months that always existed because our end chart are, are not taking that in account. And what happened is that during a regular update process, I wasn't careful because I took these services were replicated. So I triggered the updates of the operating system for security issues. And that resulted on, yeah, the service was absolutely shut down time for the new machine to start pods. It was only one or two minutes, but it was cooked by your security team because they were testing things before the uh, last last week during their security advisory. So that issue has been open to track this. That means we will have to update uh, M chart by M chart to add anti-affinity, which should have the result of scaling at least the RM uh, based pods to two machines at the same time. Ah, okay. So, so Damien, I need to be sure I understood okay. what you just said. So we've got today's configuration may be running a single pod to serve javadoc.jenkins.io or something no. like that. No. They are running two or more pods. Oh, they are already but running two or more. All these pods could Maybe be on running this... on one machine. Right. Okay. So, so we are already using two pods. It's just that sometimes the two pods may be on the same physical computer, which is not nearly high availability, not nearly available enough. We need it yeah, on two exactly. different computers. And the, and the chance to have the two pods on the same uh, host are bigger with ARM because True. we have a, a little number of, of, of them. So we should only need one node for the power, but we should have two for that kind of problem. So, so what this really means is if we're running in minimal case today where we only allocated one ARM64 physical machine in order to run all of our pods, we will now be running two ARM64 machines at least because in order to be able to, to reset one of them, we have to have a second machine. Makes sense. And you can say that we are saving a lot of money right now because we're using only one. <laughs> well... We're probably saving money. I'm not sure. A lot is, I'm ready to sign up for a lot yet, but yes. <laughs> uh, definition. 
So yeah, uh, I'm not sure if we are able to work on this in the upcoming week, but I, I think we should. Uh, personally, I will advise on Stefan, once you have finished the IRM64 Docker image builds, you move to this one before going back to migration of workloads to the RM64. Yeah, agreed. Uh, like that, the, the other one will take advantage of that too. Less prior than IRM64 Docker. Less priority than IRM64 builds, but should. But more important than Intel IRM workload migration. Okay, any question? So let's continue the artifactory HTTP 401 errors. So I had a meeting as reported on the issue, a meeting with the support. So they, during five days, I checked daily and Daniel as well. And the new user created an account app and logging for the first time on Artifactory were set up with the, the option uh, disabled. And the I tested the morning before the call, so two hours before the call. And during the call, I'm, I'm sure the, something was done to our instance because suddenly it started, the, the viable def, uh, option was the default suddenly, which wasn't the case two hours. So that's a good news. <laughs> uh, so now the new user have the proper setup, which means now we only have to find a way to treat the other thousand users and ensure they have the proper setup. Um, didn't have time to spend on this one, given that we only have one user asking for that this week. However, we still need to find to write a batch script. Uh, of course, I asked them and they said, oh, you have a nice API, you could use it. Yes. <laughs> so that means uh, some batch script will be written soon um, i will be happy to share the burden or delegate to someone but only administrator can validate and test that so yeah unless you want to set up a full artifact instance artifact or instance on your machine and the ldap and the connection between both and the test case of users so yeah better to test in production you user now have proper configuration and now needs to patch ex existing user once. Any question? Okay, so I will continue working on this topic this week, I hope. I started something uh, on the go this week, so I that's a long time thing. Uh, plugin site build commonly fails on infra CI when accessing plugins Jenkins IO. Last time I checked, before ever you went to holidays, you dis you detected that every three hours we had a, a peak of five or two errors when the site was generated from uh, fastly plugin backend. Uh, I don't think neither you and I have time to, to dive on that topic. So we did not uh, dive more on the topic except the three error. We are not sure if it's fastly or uh, uh, sending the error, or if it's firstly answering an error due to an error on the backend. So yeah, uh, got a dip on this topic. We are not at ease with the plugin site architecture to be quite honest, so not sure uh, if we have time right now. Um, Hervé, I believe you made a proposal and maybe it's already done. Can you remind me if you already implemented a retry on the build setup? I think you're muted. Yeah, you're mute. Sorry. I don't think so. We need to check that, but uh, yeah. Proposed a retry on the pipeline on short term. 
Is that okay? You, you, to check and if it's not done, to add a retry on the build. Uh, I know it's always for builds like this one, when we generate something that's the same for RPU. Uh, I know that we have a lot of developers that say, hey, we could implement retry natively inside the, the batch jobs and whatever, but on the infrastructure side, we don't really have the expertise to jump on these elements on the language and the domain that we not always uh, master. So at least on short term, adding a retry, that's not the best, but one, two, three retry eventually avoids errors most of the time. So the goal is to decrease the errors, making them a bit more invisible. Though. That's most of the time the problem. But now that one is not is visible. So let's add retry and then diagnose. Any question? Okay, next major topic is the update center migration out of from AWS. Hervé, your turn. Um, so, uh, if you can open this uh, issue, I've um, put the last uh, status uh, update on it. Um, uh, last uh, Before my PTO, I've noticed that the uh, mirror bits equivalent service we've put in place for update uh, the Jenkins.io on public ITS cluster was failing with uh, um, a specific error log. Uh, looking more in detail in mirror bits code, uh, source code, uh, I've noticed that the mirror we're adding needs to be able to respond to FTP or RSync requests be added uh, as valid uh, mirror uh, to mirror bits. So um, we first looked at, uh, I've looked at uh, Munt uh, S3 like bucket uh, as volume, but um, most, most solutions are uh, using S3 FS uh, uh, to mount uh, S3 as Fuse file system, which is a no-go for us as it imply running with privileged uh, um, context execution. So I've looked at uh, resurrecting the decommissioned uh, mirror we had previously, azure.mirror.jenkins.io which is using the same storage account, which was using the same storage account as MirrorBits and added a AirSync uh, server running as daemon. I've uh, transplanted this uh, capacity in MirrorBits, so we don't have to uh, use and maintain two charts, which are almost identical. And uh, when this uh, service will be deployed, I'll I tend to use it uh, to try to add uh, the year two buckets uh, mirror with its own URL, HTTP URL, and this uh, AirSync daemon uh, URL running on another service. And serving the Azure storage account content we are already using as local uh, Preference repository for your uh, Doing so, we will have to ensure that the content on the Azure storage account and the R2 buckets are uh, updated uh, in sync. And the next step will, will be to transplant uh, many STA access redirection to get uh, similar um, behaviors and the current update that Jenkins today. So you you mentioned rsync, and I'm not sure I've understood. So rsync rsync today is used by the other mirror repositories like OSU, OSL, and um, Yamagata and others. Airsync or FTP. Oh, they some of them are synchronizing with the, FTP. Uh, yes. 
I can I think the list of the mirror is in the Elm search with me and uh, with uh, the Ersync or FTP address we are uh, setting them. Well, so so I, I'm sorry. I was thinking from the provider side, from the from the side that we provide. So I have an update site on my private uh, inside my private network, and it reads from an rsync server that is, I think that is, one of the mirrors of GET, uh, but the central server is providing both rsync and. Um, FTP is that what you're saying, Hervé? I'm trying to understand, or is it um, for Mirror to be able to be added to Mirror Bits list of Mirror? The Mirror needs to be able to respond to Ersync or FTP I request, see. so it can be scanned for its uh, file list. Okay, so the the so Mirror Bit knows which repo is up to date for. Uh, right. right so. Okay. So before Mirrorbits is willing to offer a file from a mirror, it has checked to be sure that the file is on that mirror and has the correct checksum. Got it. Yeah, Thanks. The, not exactly the, the file, but it's uh, the first steps when you are you're adding a mirror is to scan the uh, this mirror uh, either. Uh, FTP or AirSync, and if uh, none of them are available, it fails. And there is also the AirSync you mentioned, uh, Mark. So Hervé also had the same confusion initially. Uh, the mirrors that we provide can download the data we provide on for Get Jenkins IO, so the HPI files. They can download using AirSync, but they also need to provide the AirSync server, so they are both client and server, because we need to be able to scan them. Or FTP is the alternative, of course. So that's why we have today that tricky topic. If we use S the S3 uh, bucket in Cloudflare or on Amazon or somewhere else, we have a cheap HTTP server that we can replicate and the storage costs nothing. But Mirrorbit is not able to scan it, as Hervé explained. Um, so in the case of the update center, the proposal I made to Hervé is to say, hey, let's provide the Ersync server on the reference because we control the updates. It's atomic. That means we say, hey, here is the update center. We copy it on the reference and then we copy it on Cloudflare on two locations. And once the both copies have been successful, then we trigger a scan. So we tell Mirobit, please scan that AirSync or FTP somewhere. So if Mirrorbit points to the AirSync server on the reference data, it's not a problem. It will think the file is there, but we don't have the risk, or the risk is really low of a discrepancy between Cloudflare and the reference. That is not possible with GetJenkins.io, of course, because we don't control when a given Mirror has run their AirSync to get the data. So we need to carefully scan each of the mirrors at every at any moment. It's only because we control the update of the mirrors in the case of update center. That, that's mandatory for us in any case for security reason, of course. So that's okay to get started with this one. We have other alternatives. We can stop using uh, saying uh, we can say no more buckets. We will use a machine or whatever service somewhere in the world and use these mirrors for at least moving a current update center to Azure and first time. Cloudflare is only there because it's cheap. It that would have been a new sponsor and they have a, um, a foot on the China network. But if we don't have an easy solution or if it doesn't work, as I said, then let's use a dumb virtual machine with storage, web server and everything in digital ocean and Azure and different locations. Um, also, a uh, proposal I made to Hervé is that given that mirror bits is not quite often updated, the code is quite simple. That will be a nice uh, feature request to say, hey, why not adding S3 as a scanning protocol? Which means we could directly say, hey, we have S3 compliant buckets. 
and mirror orbit could directly take care of the scanning, avoiding having to provide a nursing for these servers. All the S3 providers, AWS, Digital Ocean, Scaleway, OVH, Cloudflare, they all provide both S3 and HTTP protocol. So that will be a really useful feature for mirror orbits. But that would need to put our hands dirty in the Golang code of the application, but still could be really useful for infrastructure. Does that make sense? Because that's not an easy topic at all, and it's critical one. So good job on that one, Hervé. Support S3 for scanning mirrors. Is there something else to add? Okay, so Hervé, I believe you only work also tomorrow and then you're gone for holidays. So that means tomorrow you and I will have to do some kind of handover if it's okay for you. So I can continue working on that topic since it's a top level priority. Is that okay for you? Do you really want to keep that topic? And we can say, let's wait when you're back uh, and see what we can do uh, instead. How do you feel? Mm, we'll see tomorrow how, how mm -hmm. we progress, but yeah, I think... Uh, okay. I, I don't mind either. It's better if we can hand over and finish earlier, but yeah, maybe you want to take the whole topic uh, and you might be more efficient when you will be back from holidays, so I don't mind. Okay. Unless there is a question, objection. Next topic, uh, nothing to do to say. It's a, a GitHub organization permission managed by the Jenkins CI admin where they only use our tracker for centralization. Uh, a word about... So we have two issues that are linked each other's, it's migrating third CI to new network and restricts to VPN users only the access to both trusted and, and the new third CI. Uh, in order to work on this topic, I've started uh, to work on Terraform code refactor uh, for numerous reasons of maintenance. Uh, otherwise, creating all the proper resources, network security groups and cloud resources for a third controller will be too much uh, waste of effort. Tim already suggested that we should create a Terraform module. So it's the first instance of the same topology. In particular, trusted and cert will be exactly the same topology on network level. So in order to achieve a proper VPN restriction, uh, I chose to refactor on the Terraform module now CI and Trusted are, are using that module. So now I should be able to spin up cert CI a new virtual machine and we'll migrate its data on this one. We expect uh, then once it's done, not only securing Trusted and cert CI access, it's already the case for cert, but not for Trusted, uh, but also we'll be able to delete the legacy network to avoid uh, wasting resources on Azure. Is there any question on this one? Okay. Let us spawn a new instance or sort. Um, and this one blocked by below issue. Sort. Uh, migrate package origin service from AWS to Azure. So I didn't have any time to work on it. It's the same idea as uh, what Hervé is doing. Uh, I wanted to walk on the on the foot of Hervé, especially with the work he did on improving the M charts. Um, since we will have holidays and eventually take uh, take over of the updates, Jenkins IO, I propose to move that issue uh, on the backlog until update center, until we have a clearer view. It's on the good direction, but I want I don't want to follow Hervé's work and then having to change two or three times uh, because we had bad surprises in update center. So I prefer that we are we start to have something. We are close to a stable situation for date center thanks to, to that job. So uh, yeah, I prefer having less things but doing them sequentially but properly. Is that okay for everyone? Back to backlog. Uh, time, um, say. Okay. 
Uh, common prompts to avoid confusion between services. Stefan, I believe you wanted to work on this one, but you didn't have time. Um, exactly, I'm sorry. Do you want to keep it? Is that possible? Yes, please. Yes. If it's possible. Still working on it. Uh, next issue, ATH builds commonly unresponsive. So um, that was Stefan ideas that uh, blocks us from closing the issue to uh, to build ATH on spot on first try and then fall back on on demand if spot error. Uh, that's uh, just a few pipeline code line. Stefan, is it okay if I take over this one for billing reasons on Azure? I just want to have this implemented before every developer come back from holidays and start peaks of ATH builds. So of, oh, yeah, frozen. Yes, and yes. and in fact, we we you planned to do it, but sh to show me that. Okay, last week. So so that that would Ideally... be perfect if you have time to. Okay. Um, takes over, but. Will per always only if it's not uh, 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 taking time of you from the RM64 build. I want you fully, fully focused on this one. I agree. I agree. Uh, Linux Foundation, Mark, did you have a feedback from the LF about the caching topic? I okay. have not asked them yet. Sorry, no, no feedback because I've not asked. No request sent to LF yet. Right, that's Not still my action item. Critical item. Cool. Um, Stefan, RM sixty four. Can you give us a? Summary? Yeah, in fact, that, that's easy. We we I'm working on the chat pipeline library to be able to to build uh, our images on IMD and ARM. So the proposal is not going further until I'm able to build all the image that we plan to move to migrate uh, in both platform. But it yeah, sounds good. Already migrated? <clears throat> yes. OK. Uh, I believe right now you are switching to use of Docker bake files Docker to allow uh, Docker bake for Linux, at least. Yes. To allow IRM64. Windows and IRM64 is not a thing for our cloud provider. So that will be Windows Intel or Linux, IRM, Intel. And the benefit of Docker Bake, it's a bit of revamp and change the behavior of the pipeline library. But that will benefit because that means we can also build images for PowerPC or S390X image if you want to run custom agent or custom services on such machines. Meaning if we have a sponsor giving us this kind of machines, we can use them for production workloads. Especially for uh, HA services, that means we could have one Intel machine and then replicas on, let's say, cheaper machines in the future. Yes. Thanks. Uh, so you have to continue working on that. It's your top priority item. Is that correct? Yeah. We need we need to discuss how we handle some names and, and stuff, but uh, it's mm -hmm. almost done for me. Okay. Status working on naming convention. When you start speaking about naming convention of variables, it means you're, you're almost there. Yeah, last time I said I was almost there, it took me like two or three weeks more, so I should be more careful, but to set up the MySQL instance. So Matomo is still same status. We still need to set up the MySQL instance and images and stuff. Since we plan to deploy it on ARM64 at first, that means uh, the second task around images, I'm waiting for Stefan effort on this one. But at least we can start setting up MySQL instance. Uh, finally, Hervé, I believe we can put Blushen back to backlog.
that's not a problem. I just wanted to be sure, but since you are in holidays, uh, neither Stefano or I will be able to work on it. Oh, there is. Okay, that's all for me on all these topics. That should uh, be a, we should shrink the next milestone. Do you have new topics you want to mention here while I'm checking for new issues? Okay, we have a blocked anti-spam system. So that's a usual account. So day-to-day -day operation. And the last trades are still on the backlog. And okay, no, nothing new for us. Uh, just a word on Kubernetes 1.26. Um, the arts limit will be October 20 to, uh, 2023. So that means we should plan 1.26 in September. Just as a reminder. That's all for me. Anything else for you folks? Nope. Okay, cool. So then uh, see you next week for Stefan, Kevin, and hi. Enjoy your holidays, uh, Hervé. Take care. We want you fully rested and, and powered up in two weeks. See ya, folks. Take care and see you next week. Right.